Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to one of our videos for pro tips for marriages. This is in our hashtag relationship goals series for East Coast Christian Center. And these are typically gonna be 10 to 20 minutes long taking a deeper dive into a subject because as we do a relationship goals, we have a great message and Pastor Dan actually preached an incredible message this, this weekend about uh, his experience, his 44 years of marriage. We are gonna be dropping off different videos for married couples, for singles, and for parents. This week, we're actually gonna drop one for marriage and one for singles, and then next week, we'll drop one for marriage. And today with me, I have Cole and Caitlin Maffeo. And so thank you guys for being here. Um, before we get officially started in this session, um, what I got some questions for you, okay? Um, Let's do it. First of all, what is your favorite uh, go-to snack during this coronavirus, COVID-19 uh, time that we live in right now? Cole, what is it? Definitely chips and queso. Chips Go and through queso. the whole bag one day, it's, okay. oh yeah. Uh, that's, that's definitely a good one. And don't sit here and try to tell me you eat broccoli as your snack. Please yeah. do not lie to us right now. No, it's definitely cereal. All cereal. the sugary cereals. Mm. Favorite done. cereal? Do you have a top go-to or do you like to shuffle it around? Um, right now, I think it's peanut butter Captain Crunch. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. So good. Yeah. So I am definitely all about brown sugar Pop-Tarts, it's like my jam, but I also am all about the, the new um, orange flavored ginger ale. Like, I'm loving this right now, okay? Yeah. And uh, I can't drink enough of them. And I don't even like soda hardly at all, but that's where, that's where I'm at these days. Um, we're gonna walk through some stuff together. First of all, how long have you been married? Uh, we've been married about eight months now. That's awesome. Um, loving it, yeah, it's yeah. been great. Enjoying it a lot. Yeah, and I'm sure you're learning a lot about uh, each other and about yourselves, which is totally normal. That's, uh, that's what it means to be married, is this constant learning, constant growing. And the more that you grow and the more that you learn, the better your marriage will, will be. Um, I've got this uh, folder. I, I could have made this look nice and fancy and put us on an iPad, but this is what I've been using for the last 14 years that I've been counseling people. Um, I've been a pastor for 16 years now and, and I've done some premarital counseling way back in the early days, but I would only been married a year. And so I kind of like struggled with a lot of the marriage counseling stuff out there. And I came across some great stuff from Focus on the Family. And I've, I've got some of that here and it's, it looks terrible. In fact, it's a copy of an old scratched up thing, but I like to keep it like this because I don't think these principles change. You know, these principles are good for a premarital counseling appointment. They're good for an eight month marriage. They're good for a 40 year marriage. And, and they're basically touch up points. And what I would call this are four essential things for a marriage to survive and a marriage to thrive. And of course, we're asking ourselves right now all these questions about what's actually essential in life and what's essential in business. And is this essential? Is that non-essential? These are essential things for marriage. And some of these you guys are going to participate in me with and others, it's just listening and, and uh, growing in this. And so the first essential thing is this word called commitment. And it sounds great, right? I'm committed. But here's the problem. With American culture, we are genuinely individuals. We love our freedom, we love our independence. In fact, this nation was founded on independence. We celebrate an Independence Day, and we're, we're very actually sold out to individualism and individual rights and personal rights and personal freedoms. These are things that our society as a whole cares about so much. And the problem with that is although those are very good things, if a marriage is built on individual rights and personal freedoms, what ends up happening is we don't end up caring about that other individual over there. We end up only caring about ourselves. Someone might say, you know, if I bring 50% to a marriage and I bring 50% to a marriage and I put that together, that's 100% love. That's 100% and we've got that. But I would say that's not even a great recipe for a good marriage, you've got to bring 100% of love and care for the other person. And you've got to bring 100% love and care for that other person. And what ends up happening is as you're giving her the love that she needs and she's giving you the respect that you need, what you end up getting there is the other person is filled up. And, and they never have to worry about, will, will I have my needs being met? Because one of the, the key factors of a successful marriage is that individual needs are actually being met. 
And so it's very important that, that your personal needs and, and your needs emotionally are being met and all these things are being met and for you as well. Those are very important. And so it's, it's, it's good to know what the other person's needs are. And it's very good to communicate what those needs are. But if we're all about our own needs and we're all about, hey, what, what can I get taken care of for myself? We end up running out of help for the other person. But if we can walk into a marriage with a commitment to say, what do they need? Like, what could they use? Let me put myself in their shoes today. If we all do that, and of course that's uh, easier said than done, obviously. But when that's happening, and when there's a trust that that person is taking care of your needs, and you trust and you learn what they need, and, and you trust that they're going to do that, it brings a comfort and an ease into a marriage. Now, of course, as we're talking to lots of different types of people and lots of different situations, this, of course, can be totally abused, you know, and I, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that, but this gives no right or no excuse for, you know, one person's always getting their needs met and the other is never getting their needs met. And that would be like a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex and a sheep in a marriage, you know, the sheep it's always getting bites taken out of it. And we, we've got to balance that out by, if you're the Tyrannosaurus Rex, um, then you need to learn how to stop taking care of your needs all the time and learn how to serve that other person. And if you're that sheep, you need to learn how to stand up for yourself and uh, express your needs. Like, this is what I need. And if there's any you know, serious situation happening like abuse or anything like that, we obviously would need to report that to the police or you could reach out to a pastor. These things need to be said because not everybody's in a good situation. But if we can get around the basic mindset of I'm going to approach marriage taking care of what they need and, and they're going to take care of my needs, that creates a circle of giving. The next, and this is what I want you guys to participate in here, uh, the next essential item to marriage is communication, right? Because how can you even let the other person know what you need if you're not sharing it? Okay, and one might say uh, blood to the body or blood to the heart. Blood to the heart is like communication to the marriage. You know, oil in the engine is like communication to the marriage. It keeps the engine running. It keeps the heart beating. Without communication, almost every fight that you're going to have typically comes from poor communication or a lack of communication. And you can get in front of almost any situation by communicating in advance. And I'll explain a little bit of that later, but truly communicating over communicating is better than under communicating. And most people don't over communicate, actually. They under communicate. And they spend a lot of time in their own head. They spend a lot of time up, you know, just what, what, what uh, plans do I have today? What needs do I have today? What's my big issue today? And they spend very little time communicating. And with communicating also comes listening, okay? I am not the greatest listener, okay, Jessica, I know that you, you would agree with that, but I'm not the greatest listener sometimes, oh, no. right? Okay, like we're not always the greatest listener because we're not truly thinking about communication. So here's some thoughts on communication. One is just getting to know the other person. And this would be a great thing to do early on in a marriage, or if you were in a marriage that you feel kind of got stagnant, I think it would be even a great thing to do if... Uh, you were transitioning in marriage from like the kids are living at the house and now they're getting ready to go off to college and now you have that maybe empty nest thing happening or maybe you just had children and they're all really little. You might need to recalibrate your relationship and where it's at. So these are also great transition and recalibration uh, uh, options as well. And so the first one, we're going to call it sharing our feelings, okay? And I know it sounds a little odd, okay? But especially if you don't like to talk about feelings. Well, there's a lot of people out there like, feelings, share my feelings. That's so lame, you know? <laughs> Well, it's not lame. It's actually a good thing. It's how you get to know people. And it's just the exercise. It's actually uh, was, I believe, created by Dr. Doug Weiss. And it's something that I did in the first year of my marriage. And I've seen other people do. And what you do for 100 nights is you share or go through this exercise called sharing your feelings. Okay. And you do it every night. And it's an awesome thing. And so here's what the feelings exercise is. 
Feelings exercise is you answer two questions. The first question is, when is the first time I felt like this, okay? When is the first time I felt like this? And the second question that you answer is, uh, I feel this way when, okay? And I'll explain that, all right? So the first one we're gonna go through now and we're gonna pick emotions for each other, okay? And so you pick an emotion for him, he's gonna pick an emotion for you, and you're gonna answer the question, the first question is, the first time I felt like that was, and you share that story, okay? You actually, and you have to be descriptive, all right? You have to open up here. The other thing is, there's a couple rules. Oh you have to look each other <laughs> in the eyes while you tell this story. So don't be looking at me right now, all right? When you do this story, you gotta <laughs> stare deeply into each other's eyes, okay? The second thing is the story cannot be about the other person, okay? So this isn't an opportunity to fluff them up or even tear them down because if it's a negative emotion, you could even kind of use this as a weapon against the other person to you know, change them or whatever, right? And then the third thing is you're not allowed to criticize the other person's answer. Um, it will deflate them in opening up. And so basically you could ask for clarification, like, oh, I, what did you mean by that? Or whatever, but you cannot criticize their answer. Don't laugh at their answers like, oh, are you serious? Ha <laughs> ha, whatever. Because you may not know that about that person. And, and here's the thing as you do this, you'll learn things about each other. You'll talk about things, even if you've been married for 20 years, that you've never known about the other person, okay? It's really, cr it's actually crazy. It's an amazing exercise. And so go ahead and pick an emotion for him and he'll, he'll go first. We're gonna put all the pressure on him right now. So what emotion, emotions like angry, happy, frustrated, anxious, and mad and angry are two different emotions. So pick one and- So the story is not necessarily when our relationship. No, it's the first time you felt that way. It could be when you're three years old or 12 okay. years old or 20 years old. It doesn't gotcha. matter. Okay. Go ahead. Let's do um, this. <laughs> I choose anxious. 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 Well, that's rough. Well, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably the first time I can remember feeling that was when I applied to colleges and I wanted to get into UF and that was the last college I heard from. So I remember sitting at the computer for like 20 minutes, refreshing and refreshing and refreshing and freaking out all day long. And I was super anxious because I knew that like that was the college I wanted. And without it, I would have been like super bummed out. So thankfully I got into it and that's how we met. <laughs> but um, that was the first time I think I can remember feeling that like true anxious. That's great. So why don't you pick, really yeah, why don't you pick an emotion for her? <laughs> Be nice. Um, Let's do joy. Joy. Okay. So the first time I truly felt joy, I would say I was about eight years old and we found out for Christmas that we were gonna get a dog. Oh yeah, you do love and dogs. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and so um, we found out that we were gonna get a dog and that we were actually on our way to go get the dog. I didn't know where we were going because I was not paying attention, I guess. <laughs> and so we went to go get the dog and they showed all of them to me and then I got to pick which one. Okay. And I got to pick him up and that was the first time I actually ever picked up a dog. Cool. So that was really cool. <laughs> and then we took him home and since then, I think I've really always loved dogs so they give yeah. me the same amount of joy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And you actually pointed out some things while you were talking that, you know, you can observe some things about that person when they share these experiences. Like the first time you felt anxious was then, uh, that type of thing probably always makes you feel anxious would be my guess, okay? Yeah. Some people yeah. <laughs> don't feel anxious over those type of things. They're like, ah, oh, it'll just happen when it happens. But some people do. And when you begin to recognize a pattern in a person as they share their emotions, you can begin to understand more where they're coming from when they're dealing with certain situations. And then you know you can have a little more grace for that time in their life. And, and the comment wouldn't be like, ah, don't worry about it, it's gonna work out. That's not the comment you would say if you really understood how anxious they were. You'd say something more like, oh my gosh, you know what? 
it's going to be okay. And I'm here with you in the struggle. Like we're going to get through this and God's got a good plan. You're going to encourage them, right? These are the type of things. And for her with joy, I bet that there are other opportunities to surprise her in life. And she probably would appreciate that. And you can kind of even begin to break down that first experience to create these future joy moments as you go forward in your, in your marriage with anniversaries and birthdays and these different types of things. You can learn that about her because frankly, there's a lot of people that don't like surprises that don't like, but she at this point, and I don't know you that well, but you might like those types of surprises. It sounds like, okay. And this is, this is just humanity 101. And so the next one is this, uh, you pick another emotion for him and uh, you're just going to say, I feel that way when, okay. And this is wide open. All right. This isn't the first time but it can't be about her. You have to look each other in the eyes and you can't criticize still. So go ahead and pick him another emotion. I choose frustrated. Frustrated. And it's wide open. And it could be how you feel today or how you felt a week ago. And be careful. Your boss is probably around here. Okay. Like, <laughs> um, okay. So I feel frustrated um, when the dog that we've had for four years or that I've had for four years is not listening. <laughs> And with our new dog, as you know, and has been constantly getting on to him for nothing. Um, so that frustrates me a lot. So I guess it would be more of a control thing. Because <laughs> I do feel that sometimes when I'm like trying to do things, you know, at work and I'm trying to like fix the little bit of things and I just can't do it. And I hate having to like ask for my boss to come over and look at it because I just get super frustrated that I can't figure it out or I can't control it enough to do it. Mm. That's good. That's a good insight. All right. And that's, it's great to get those type of things off your chest. All right. Pick an emotion for her. Let's do disappointed. This is going to be a tough one. <laughs> hmm. I feel disappointed when... Hmm. This one's, <laughs> put you on the this spot, one's yeah. rough. Um, <laughs> I would say I feel disappointed when I don't get my way, honestly. Yep. Like, if I, <laughs> I think you set me up. So, <laughs> Not intentionally. <laughs> so, and yeah, I think that's, that's about right. <laughs> so whenever I don't get what I want, I kind of pout and get quiet and... It's not necessarily like, oh, you can't have ice cream tonight, kind of disappointed. <laughs> it's like when we want to go and do something and it rains and we can't go, I get disappointed. Yeah. And I don't like those kind of surprises <laughs> yeah. where yeah. you kind of have to change plans last minute. Yeah. So. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's really good. And it's a great way to learn about the other person, hearing their disappointments, hearing what makes them tick, and even learn about yourself. And what makes this exercise a lot easier is if you actually come up with a list of emotions, and you can Google that, you can go look that up, and you'll see a list of 100 different emotions because you know happy and happiness are actually two different things. They'll conjure different things in your imagination and your, in, in your emotions. And Doing this for 100 days in a row, you'll really learn a lot about the other person. And another part of communication is taking a focused state. So what you're going to do is have a business meeting, okay? And you do this once a year. And, and the best way that I've found to do this is go ahead and talk about the important things of the year, the, the decisions that you have to make. And this could be as simple as, like, do I want to buy a house this year? Do we want to continue to rent? Or... Are we interested in investing one day and making these type of budget decisions? And what we actually do now is we go through our Dave Ramsey uh, Financial Peace University budget every year and we fix it every single year to line up with our goals because the secret of a budget is a budget is how to direct your money in the way that you want it to go. So you got to talk about the direction of which way do we want to go? Do we want to spend more money on vacation? Do we want to spend more money on food? Do we want to spend more money on education? Do we want to spend more money on housing and, and these very, what's important to us? For instance, our family, we've kept a low budget on groceries. We thought we'd rather spend a little more money on other things than groceries, so let's shop smart. Some people love to spend money on groceries and 
get all these organic things and all these wonderful things. And well, the thing is, you got to ask the question, is that what we want to do? And uh, here's what you'll find is when you talk about things in advance, like, for instance, what are we going to do for Christmas this year? Well, you talk about it, right? And you say, well, let's go to my mom's and then your mom's and their mom's and blah, 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 and all that, right? You get all that out. And then say around uh, October or something or November, you know, Thanksgiving, you're starting to think about a different set of plans for some reason, you know, right? It's like, <laughs> maybe we don't want to do that anymore. And la, 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 right? Now you can always go back to that original conversation and say, hey, I know we talked about going there for Christmas, but what would you think about doing something different? Here's what most of the time happens. Thanksgiving's rolling around, everybody's getting all stressed out, and someone's like, hey, what do you think about going on a cruise and this for Christmas? And the other person's like, whoa, 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 we always go to my mom's for Christmas. What are you, are you trying to ruin Christmas? You know, like, <laughs> and then you fight about it, and you're mad, and, and then you expected them to want to go on the cruise, so your expectations aren't being met, and you're like, you don't care what I think, and like you're, psh, you know, you're fighting. But if you communicate in advance, you can use that platform to stand on for future communication. Like, hey, I know we talked about investing more money into our 403B, but what would you think about taking a portion of that money and setting it aside for a future rental property? Hmm, that's a good idea. Let's think about that, right? Mm -hmm. you, you're creating a bridge that the other person can walk on. And you wouldn't, you would, you'd be so surprised how having that kind of meeting really smooths marriage communication out. So once a year. Um, the last two are going to go pretty quick. Um, but I have a question, and it's, it's something to think about. What happens if you're into a marriage and there's something you disagree about? And I'm not talking about uh, something that is like life-threatening or life-altering decision, but something that you disagree about and you've shared it with the other person. Um, and it might take a few years for you to actually run into something like this. Uh, it may be, you might run into this tomorrow, you never know. And you say, hey, I'd like to do this. And the other person is like, no, I don't want to do that. And you're like, but I want to do that. And they're like, no, I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm, I don't like that. I'm not interested in that. I, you know, and it might be a fear thing. It might be a frustration thing. It might be an experience thing. And, and it almost surprises you, like, I don't know how to deal with this. Or it could be something as simple as something that person needs to change. Like, for instance, they're not picking up any of their clothes on the floor and they refuse to do it, right? <laughs> These type of things. Not that I've ever done that or whatever. <laughs> not him. What do you do? I mean, how do you get them to change? Uh, our options are, are kind of limited, aren't they? It's like you badger them, you manipulate them, you, you get frustrated with them, you go cold on them, you go hot on them, and like you complain about it, you talk about it, you, you talk to your friends about it, you, you talk to your pastor about it, you, you pray on it, you know, all these things, and it's all a joke, right? It's like you, you, what, you can't change them. What do you do, right? What do you do? What do you do? This is a great question, and it's a very simple answer. It's pray. Prayer actually works. You pray for the other person and you trust God, the same God that speaks to you, that you listen to, that you're willing to change, that you're willing to soften your heart to. It's the same God that they love. Mm -hmm. And you have to believe that that other person is in tune with the Holy Spirit and they will actually listen to the Lord lead and guide them. And so you pray for them and let God speak to them. Let God show them you live your life with respect and honor and humility and let God change that part of them. And again, I'm not talking about critical life and death things because there are different ways that you handle drug addictions and you know those type of things and abuse. There's a whole other method, but this is just the things of life where you, you butt heads and you, will this ever change? You know that every marriage has those. You pray for that other person. In fact, that's the final point. The final essential item is strong beliefs is faith in God. You've got to have strong faith in God. And what I would recommend doing, and, and really something that I've done with my wife from day one, fortunately we were given the same advice. I've prayed with her every evening for 16 years. Now I've probably missed about 20 days in 16 years. No lie. Wow. Now some of those prayers have, have not been very great. They've been like, God, Help me go to sleep right now, amen. You know, like some of them, right? It's like you're exhausted, right? Help the kids leave us alone, you know, whatever, right? So not all the prayers have been wonderful. To make them better, though, uh, many times you can just ask the other person, what do you need prayer for? Like, what's going on in your life? And uh, they could say, 
this and you pray for them. And so we want to close this moment with prayer. And Cole, I would want you to pray for your wife here and pray for Caitlin that, uh, that what do you need, right? And pray for that. So pray for your marriage. <laughs> Dear Lord, I, just, I thank you, first of all, just for this amazing woman that I have in front of me and um, that I've been able to get to know her and be married with her. And uh, I pray to you, Lord, just to give her confidence as she moves into this next step in her life, as she um, moves forward in her career as becoming a teacher and doing all that. And I pray that you give her peace about it. And as she takes all these tests and moves forward with it, that you are there with her every step of the way. And that you give her that confidence and that peace and everything so that she can move forward easily in this. And Lord, I just pray for our marriage together that we consistently are looking towards you as we move on with our lives. And every step of the way and every, every time that we butt heads or have problems or issues, you know, that we constantly are looking at you and having you be a part of this relationship. I pray that you help us with all of that and, you know... Help us as we become parents, as we have children, as we move on with our lives and buy a house and all the things that we want to do. Um, and I pray that you give us the wisdom to make the right choice when, we, when it comes to these big decisions. Um, and I just thank you for everything that you've given us so far and everything that I know you will give us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, it's awesome to watch you guys pray. And uh, as Christians... We've got to pray. We've got to be able to talk to the Lord. And it doesn't have to be the greatest prayers. It doesn't have to be eloquent. You don't have to know all the words. All you have to do is open your life up to the Lord and, and say something with your mouth. Say something to him. It's a prayer that you could pray every night before you go to sleep is thank you, God, for everything that we have. Amen. And you're just done. I would encourage you to add some of these essential things into your life. Uh, commitment, communication, patience, and strong beliefs. And uh, thanks for being a part of this video, guys. You, you laid Absolutely. it on the line for us. We <laughs> yeah. appreciate you. Love it. All right.